Good afternoon everyone, I am Angel from Lima in Peru and this is my channel Reading Means Life. Today I want to show you a book that I bought two years ago on the Independence Day here in Peru during the International Book Fair in Lima 2016, Chile in Peru, the occupation through its documents 1881-1884 by the Peruvian historian Carmen McEvoy and it has been published by the Congress of Peru. Uh, in about 856 pages this uh, book shows us many documents that the author found in different uh, institutions, in different archives of Chile and also uh, newspapers that were edited both in Chile and in occupied Peru. Uh, as well as the New York Herald. She starts um, by telling us that in 1883, a journalist from the New York Herald interviews Patricio Lynch, a member of the military in Chile. He explains a process that was uh, more complex than he wanted to admit. There was a system in which the necessities of the, um, of the Chilean state needs to be addressed. He admired the commerce and the industry in Peru, but the tension was with the foreigners who lived here, who, according to him, um, controlled the economy of Peru, and also with the uh, defeated uh, politicians from Peru for whom um, losing or surrendering was not uh, an option. In this way, the occupation was a never-ending process. For Lynch to uh, take the, um, the, um, the resources of the defeated nation was something that did not contradict international law because that was uh, what the United States did with Mexico or what Russia did with France. His mission was to discipline Peruvians, which explains the destruction of the haciendas, you know, the, the land um, um, ownership in the, in the north of Peru. Um, the, um, the, the robbery of property in order to intimidate uh, Peruvians and well that process was uh, considered by by Lynch as something well not so serious but we know that it was a, a an official plan an official objective that Chile uh, that Chile had it was not just uh, isolated by by um, uh, individuals but it was a, a part of a policy that the state that the Chilean state took the preliminary study it ranges from pages 15 I think yes 50, 11 until um, 55 and it has also a biography a bibliography well in the first part which is the historiographic um, analysis of the occupation she says that we know very very little about that part of the war um, that here in Peru we have lost, we have missed the the, um, the overall analysis. There, is, there are some narratives um, from the per personal perspective, the domestic perspective, there are autobiographies, there are memoirs, there are some uh, narrations um, that are focused on the sorrow, on the hatred towards uh, Chile, but um, the political analysis has been neglected. Well, that started to change in 1979, in which the, it was the centennial of the beginning of the War of the Pacific, in which new approaches appear, right? And the occupation starts to be analyzed from different angles. For example, the religious life in Lima, the uh, utter poverty, the uh, Chilean-Peruvian marriages, and uh, the children of those uh, Peruvian and Chileans, um, reactive nationalism, how uh, the uh, spontaneous resistance uh, meant that many uh, Chilean soldiers were executed, um, the difficulty of life for Peruvian women during the occupation, the robbery of cultural artifacts uh, that well was not accepted, uh, was not admitted by, by the Chilean authorities, the, um, the aspects of uh, race and gender, um, she mentions some articles that she wrote in 1997 and later in which um, the, um, the figure of the city of Lima becomes feminine uh, and Chile becomes masculine, okay, that dominates that, um, that country, that female country. And also uh, she tells us about civilizing warriors, a well, previous book that she, uh, that she wrote, that she published, and it, it tells us th that um, 
ideological uh, system that the Chilean government in general and the Chilean uh, press in particular um, started okay in order to um, approach this book okay what this book wants to tell us in the second uh, part which is the political military machinery um, we focus on the figure of patricio lynch uh, he was chosen by the president of chile domingo santa maria in order to represent the chilean state in the occupied territory uh, the war rescued a man from um, from you know, from the shadows and took him to the glory. He had the nationalistic desire to, to serve his country, which meant that he had the initiative to, to do many, many humble activities. And he proposed the expedition that um, caused uh, horrors you know on uh, on the peruvian coast 2000 men that um, left arica and destroyed the um, the haciendas if, um, that produce sugar and other products in the north uh, with uh, canyons uh, you, you know with all the military infrastructure that an invasion like that uh, required he um, embodied in a, a foreign territory that thing that we that could not be touched but existed that it could be perceived what was the um, which was the image of chile in peru well it was, was captured what was taken materially was impressive you know not only in the north of peru but also in the central andes um, metal especially what has been uh, stolen by um, ambrosio letelier was made in a um, in a criminal uh, attitude they behaved like like criminals but uh, like delinquents so that uh, was really worrying for the international image of chile because uh, you know that international press like the british or americans covered you know um, the, um, uh, what happened and Chile risked being seen as a, a violent, not civilized country that was its objective. So um, Lynch um, takes the occupation in his own hands, right? With uh, 13,000 men, um, of, of whom 7,500 stayed in, in Lima and Callao. What else? In the third part, which is the longest one, eh, the name is the logics of the occupation, right? From Antofagasta until Lima in eh, the way to Trujillo. This is not, it is not so important to focus on the personality of Patricia Lynch nor on his political style, but eh, to see that the, um, the formation of the um, political military machinery from Chile started in a saltpeter office in Antofagasta. It was in that, eh, at that moment, Chilean, um, Bolivian, Bolivian territory, that Chile started to model its political system that was perfected in Lima, uh, in order to be taken uh, to the northern coast as well. In less than two years, an immense uh, part of the of the coast from Antofagasta to Lima was uh, controlled by a new owner. In this case, Chile. The um, the steam. Um, boat was very important, the postal service, the telegraph that was cut and connected to Valparaiso, then the most important Chilean port um, showing okay, the, um, the, um, the different events in the war meant not only um, the articulation um, in that conquered territory, but also that territory with uh, the, Chilean, the Chilean state. Um, what else? There is not a, 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 an only way of, of control Peru. Each uh, political leader, each military le leader imposed his own style, which uh, contradicts what I, as a student, um, um, learned that difference between uh, a serious, civilized Chilean country versus the savage Peruvians. Well, uh, 
it, that was not so so simple. Um, Villegas, for example, was incapable of expressing his ideas openly. However, Reyes it, um, despised those uh, ignorant indigenous uh, population from Peru and, and, and Bolivia. There is a uh, development ideology, a progress ideology, uh, which meant that it was necessary to convince the occupied populations that it, they, they were going to have a better um, quality of life with the new owners, with the new leaders, in this case, the Chileans. Uh, it was very difficult to administer, to manage the, um, the Peruvian territory, which meant that they divided uh, our country in seven regions, Huacho, Chimbote, Trujillo, Pacasmayo, Chiclayo, Paita, Ica, and where well, Lima and Callao um, were the, um, the central government, right? Um, that that system had to be uh, supported by the arms, you know, by a, a naval force that was going to, um, as I told you, um, help that a Chilean, uh, that, that representative of the Chilean state in the Peruvian territory. The guano of the Peruvian island starts to, uh, started to be sold. The haciendas had to pay. Um, they were threatened, of course. They had to send um, meat, sugar, coffee, different products, and some individual or private uh, interests are satisfied. Uh, there are some cases in which we know that um, Chileans were robbing other Chileans, you know, that some uh, military um, were taking metal pieces from the railway in Chimbote, for example, and they were taken to their pockets, right? Not uh, um, sending that to, to the Chilean government. Uh, not only Peruvians were robbed, uh, but also foreigners who uh, originally, or at the beginning of the of the war, they were promised to uh, have their property respected. But you can see that Italians, Spanish, French, British, Portuguese uh, are, are robbed their their property is not respected that protection to uh, the peruvian population in reality is an extortion in return of um, uh, financial resources there is some propaganda um, th there is a particular case in the province of ica in which a colombian um, journalist who who lived here in Peru. Uh, before the war, he called Peruvians to fight the Chileans, but in the end, he was coerced, he was probably threatened, he was convinced to change his mind, and he did. He said that Peruvians were the only ones uh, guilty, the only ones to blame for their defeat, and they should not um, behave like an ill, an Ill man who refused to be cured. Peru had a lot of territory, a lot of wealth, and, well, what was the problem? of uh, giving of uh, of giving Tarapacá, Tacna and Anarica to Chile Peru needed to go to the lowest level in order to to soar again in order to to start a, a rebirth you know that that is uh, what is included in the in the third part and in the last part uh, which is the um, the contribution of the primary sources to the studies on the occupation, the author asks herself, what do primary sources teach us that we know very, very little uh, about key political events? Well, we know that the Chilean bureaucracy uh, monopolized the postal service, the communication systems, that there was a lot of violence because you can see, imagine many Chilean soldiers going to a uh, strange territory. So there was a type of mechanism that meant that he started to drink alcohol and he started to arrest it, um, many people, to kill many people as the case of a poor Chilean, uh, sorry, Peruvian boy. Um, there was a, a resident in Lima who was uh, robbed, who was beaten terribly. Um, not only that, but also there are many letters, um, official letters, uh, between the, um, the president uh, of Chile, Domingo Santa Maria, and his representative, his mili military representative in Chile, and how he despised uh, the wealth of Peru. He called the guano smelly, uh, but sarcastically the author says that, well, he accepted that wealth. 
because that meant more power for for that meant more power for Chile. Um, also, what we can uh, notice from the sources is that the Chilean population, the public opinion of Chile. Uh, followed uh, every single uh, step of the of the um, of the war, every single event of the war, and not only that, but also um, some descriptions of the Chilean uh, of the Chilean type uh, of the Chilean people that they were serious, they were civilized, they were hardworking, they uh, achieved every goal they had. Uh, on the contrary, Peruvians were uh, lazy. Not only uh, Chilean people followed the news and uh, were given those uh, descriptions, those images of uh, Chileans on the one hand and Peruvians and Bolivians on the other hand. Also, they criticized the Chilean government for having a um, abandoned or neglected many Chilean soldiers. For example, 100 of them died uh, of, um, because of the uh, extreme weather conditions in Canta and also uh, they were so hungry that in the end they, they, they died and those deaths could have been avoided. And finally, what we can notice from the primary sources are that the salary of many um, uh, Chilean workers in the bureaucracy here in Peru was scandalously high, was terribly high, that competed against the, the president or the ministry's, uh, the, the ministry's uh, salaries, uh, which meant that they uh, were interested in making the, the of the war a never-ending process and uh, as, as a paradox, uh, that was what Peruvians wanted, that the war was um, as long as possible so that uh, the Peruvians uh, had an opportunity to win and the Chileans had the chance to uh, continue, to keep on having uh, or earning those high salaries. And in Chile, according to the New York Herald, everybody uh, was afraid of the idea of those Chileans coming back to, uh, to uh, or going back to, to Chile because in Lima they had uh, lost every sense of honor and they had learned to uh, to steal and um, so it was time to finish that war and to abandon the Peruvian territory. So this compilation is a product of many years of work. The, um, the author, Carmen McEvoy, found uh, many documents uh, in Santiago that uh, now she has um, uh, given us to Peruvians in general and Peruvian researchers in particular, it, you know, the, the quantity of documents is impressive because it goes from page uh, 65 until 855. So you can notice how many uh, different types of documents, letters and uh, news, etc. Um, appear here. There are also illustrations, well, that are not part of the document that she found, but uh, also help us uh, contextualize the invasion, the occupation. For example, the one here in the cover, which is uh, which you can find, um, which you can see better here. You can see the government palace of Peru. Uh, <laughs> my little dog is here. The government palace of Peru uh, under the Chilean flag. Okay, probably one of the most humiliating pictures. So I really recommend reading this book. It might be a little tedious, perhaps, for the general public, but it was it is really really necessary, and it might help uh, develop new uh, researches, new investigations, especially in to countries uh, with a very very long relationship and we can we should stop that uh, being playing the victim on the one hand and mocking and laughing on the other hand so that was uh, uh, all any recommendation any suggestions um, i i am open to uh, to read or to hear your comments bye bye